This video here is going to give you more information on catching bass in the month of June than any other video you have ever watched. Our team from Bass Fishing Declassified is going to, not going to only going to talk about our top baits for the month, we're going to talk about areas that we like to fish them and give you some other unique tips and advice for catching bass in the month of June. Hey guys, Kyle Crediano here with Bass Fishing Declassified. I'm going to tell you a tip of my favorite area region of the lake to fish in the month of June. This is going to be applicable on lowland reservoirs or highland reservoirs. But in the month of June, the fish are totally in their summer patterns. They're out off the flats, with the exception maybe of up north in the smallmouth. We're talking about largemouth down south, uh, Midwest kind of area. Long, flat, hard bottom points. They don't have to be big chunk rock. It can be pea gravel, it can be shell, but it's gotta be hard bottom, free of the silt sediment, no vegetation. Uh, my favorite way to fish those, and you will catch a ton of fish, trust me, is on the biffle bug, the hardhead and the Jean LaRue biffle bug. It's a 4.25 inch bug. Sooner run, about the only color you have to have. There's a lot of other good options, but when you're fishing those type of reservoirs, look for your long flat points, determine that you've got hard bottom, and you're just bombing this out there. This is the 11 16th. This is the best weight to throw. You can go down, they've got some lighter options. They got a 7 16th. Uh, but the 11 16th, you want that thing pounding the bottom. I'm throwing that thing on a Kistler chromium rod, preferably 7.3 to 7.6 foot, medium heavy or heavy action, uh, 17, 20 pound fluorocarbon. So what you do, you just Texas rig this up, you throw it out there, you let it sink to the bottom, you put your rod tip at a 45 degree angle towards the water, and you slow reel it once that gets to bottom. You want to feel like you're deep cranking that bottom. You want to feel that bug go thunk, 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 thunk. You can stop it every now and then. It's, you want it to snag on a rock and have to pop it free, just like a chatterbait in grass, but you're slow reeling it, letting it pop on the bottom, get it hung, pop it free, let it fall back to the bottom, slow reel, thunk, 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 thunk. And then when you get a bite on the biffle bug, it's, it's, it's a unique bite. Sometimes you'll feel a thump, but a lot of times, you're feeling like dunk, 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 and then it just stops and you keep reeling and you don't even really feel a fish, but you know you should be making contact with bottom. Your line might even be going one way or the other, but these fish, they're just tracking your bug on the bottom. They're right behind it. They're tracking it. They're thinking about eating it, thinking about eating it. It hits a rock, it jumps, they grab it. You're still reeling and they're just going with it. They might be going off the side, but it's not that aggressive strike that you might feel on other baits. So play, play close attention when you're dragging the bug, detect that bite. Yeah, I promise you, you're gonna get a lot of bites doing this. If you haven't tried the hard head, go give this a shot. Go to lurenet.com, use my coupon code Cordiana15. You can buy both of these for 15% off and it helps me and I always appreciate that. So hope you guys like this tip, hope it helps you and we'll see you guys on the next one here at Bass Fishing Declassified. This is one of my favorite times to fish in the northern part of the country. Natural lakes have a bunch of fish finishing up the spawn, both largemouth and smallmouth, and they're going to transition from that shallow water to deeper water. Now, a lot of times people assume that means your deep humps off of deep points, pretty deep 20 plus foot of water, but a lot of times the majority of those fish actually don't go that deep. They move out onto deeper flats. They move out to the break lines off some of those deep flats. And you're talking about 8 to 14 foot of water. A lot of times it depends on where that weed line is. If you're on a lake where the weed line's 8 foot of water, the outside weed line, that's where they're going to be. If you're on a lake that has 17 foot deep weed lines, that's where they're going to be. But a lot of the fish in these northern natural lakes stay relatively shallow year round. One of my favorite places to fish, especially this time of year, are your rock, rock transitions on some of those flats. You've got a bunch of actual perfectly good seams where you go from rock to sand or to gravel. And within those areas, you have a lot of sand patches. You might have some little clusters of, of different types of weeds, whether that's a sand grass or a green cabbage. In either case, what happens is you have these expansive flats that have a lot of different rock, sand, gravel, and weed transitions mixed in. And that's what the fish are gonna start using and setting up on during the summer months makes for some really good fishing, makes for some fishing where you can continue to work these flats, and it's almost as if the fish just keep coming to you. And those are the types of areas that I love to fun fish as well as tournament fish. I'd rather not have to move the boat, but let the fish keep coming to me. And those transition lines on these flats are their travel routes, those are their highways. One of my favorite baits lately for fishing these is gonna be 
a core tackle hover rig on a four and a quarter inch Berkeley Max Scent Flatworm. This is the smelt color, one of my favorites. You can go with any of their green pumpkins or any of their minnow variations. I try to kind of match the hatch or match the forage that the fish are feeding on. If you happen to be on a lake that's got some smelt or some alewife or some cisco, I like the smelt color quite a bit. If I'm on a lake where they feed more on bluegill and perch, I like to go with green pumpkin colors. The key with this bait though, is just to let this slow fall to the bottom. So when you're talking about fishing a flat as eight to 14 foot of water, the 364 ounce head is one of my favorites because it allows this bait just to glide and spiral down. It creates a very tantalizing fall that a lot of the largemouth and smallmouth have a hard time uh, passing up on. It's a really good bait then once you let it hit the bottom, you give it a quick snap and that bait will dart around on the bottom almost as if it's a goby or a crayfish. It gives the fish a bunch of different presentations that generally speaking, they have a hard time passing up on. Uh, you can throw some other finesse presentations as well, like your Ned Rig or a Drop Shot. It's all about finding those transitions though. The transitions are gonna be the key places. Generally speaking, you don't wanna be on a flat that's entirely rock. You don't wanna be on a flat that's entirely grass. You want a good mixture of all of those. The more different elements that you can put into one area, generally speaking, the better and more productive those areas are. So if you happen to live in the northern part of the country where you've got a lot of uh, natural lakes, make sure you're not passing up on the big flats. Those big flats in that 18, 8 to 14 foot of water range can be absolutely killer for both largemouth and smallmouth bass. From a rod and reel standpoint, anytime you're fishing your finesse presentations like the Core Tackle Hover Rig, I'm gonna be throwing it on lighter lines. So I've got an eight pound uh, Berkeley 100% fluorocarbon leader. I usually go with about a 15 foot leader that I pair up to a 10 pound Berkeley X9 braided main line. That's gonna be paired up here. This is a uh, custom built rod that I make. It's the MHX NSJ871, 7.3 medium light, one power rod. And then in this case, I've got it paired up with an Abu Garcia Revo Rocket. Just because a lot of times the, the, the bites are gonna come on the initial fall or the first couple of feet of your cast. And because of that, I like the Revo Rocket, which picks up a pile of line every reel handle turn. Therefore, I can get my bait quicker back to the boat and I can make another cast faster, which makes me more efficient on the water. Uh, pretty standard finesse setup though. This is pretty much the same setup that I'd be throwing for most of the different finesse presentations. But make sure guys, you don't pass up these flats. They're very, very good. If you guys enjoy the content in this video and want more personalized instruction, head to our website, fishthemoment.com. Then go to the virtual lessons page. Here you can book one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons with each member of the Fish the Moment team. In these one hour lessons, the Fish the Moment team member will break down your lake using Google Earth and a contour line map and answer any questions you have. Whether you're preparing for an upcoming fishing tournament or a fun weekend on the lake, make sure you sign up for one of these one-on-one -on -one virtual lessons so you're fully prepared to catch as many fish as possible on the water. Check them out at fishthemoment.com. Hey guys, welcome back here to another edition of Bass Fishing Declassified and much appreciate you guys checking today's video out. Today we're gonna to be talking about my five favorite areas to fish in the month of June. Um, I love fishing in June. Usually fishing is pretty good right before it gets really hot in the summer. And I got five areas that I really try to concentrate on, so we're gonna cover those. So anyway guys, the first one, let's talk about cove backends. The back end of coves where the fish spawn at are still a really good area to catch fish in June. And the reason this is, is because you have a lot of perch that start moving into these areas to spawn. You know, after the bass spawn, like in April and May, um, a lot of the bluegills, pumpkin seeds, black perch, all that type of stuff, they move into those areas and they start spawning and it keeps a lot of bass shallow. So I look for those really shallow flat cove back ends, pay attention for bedding perch. And I like to throw some type of a topwater lure, like a topwater frog, maybe a walking top water, maybe a swim jig is really good under those situations. So the next place I like to fish is any type of main lake or secondary point. Now, after the fish spawn in, usually by the first part, second part of June, they start using these points pretty heavily. You know, bass will live on points all year long, but in June, they really, really start to use them heavily. Now, how I fish them depends completely on the water clarity, the type of lake it is. 
but I usually like to stop, start out early in the morning with something like a walk in top water, like a Mega Bass Diamante, Zara Spook, something like that, um, under low light conditions. As the sun gets up, all these are move out a little bit deeper on the point, maybe start fishing a Mega Bass Dark Sleeper, maybe a Big Worm, uh, drag a football head jig, maybe a deep diving crankbait, but points are really good places in June. The next one, guys, is flooded cover. Uh, a lot of times, you know, with the heavy rains that we get a lot of times in April and May, you have high water levels in June, and it can be some of the best flipping of the year. So in June, I, if the water's up, I always like to look for those flat banks, those flat main lake banks, like in the major creek arms, look for flooded bushes, flooded trees, I like to pitch and flip my block of old school jig with like a zoom super chunk on it um, into the flooded cover, depending upon the water visibility dictates my color. But flipping a jig or a creature bait, um, like a zoom brush hog, uh, beaver, something like that, into flooded cover in June is just an excellent way to catch them. Next way, number four, is ledges, guys. Ledge fishing is probably at its best in June. So if you have a ledge lake, like a lot of you guys that fish the TVA lakes, or even if you fish lakes in Oklahoma or wherever, where you have some type of ledge that has a drop-off, these are bass magnets in June. And this is when some of the biggest fish are caught deep cranking. So I look for ledges. I like to fish like a Mega Bass Deep Six crankbait, uh, DD22, anything that will knock that eight to 12 foot zone down. That's where those big ones get, just on those breaks. That's those, probably the biggest uh, limits of deep diving crankbait fish that I've ever caught have come in June. And the final one, guys, number five, is fishing gravel banks. Love to fish gravel banks in the, in the month of June, especially if you have clear water. One of the favorite ways I like to fish them, again, is with a walking topwater like a Mega Bass Diamante. Um, a lot of times these fish, for whatever reason, they get on the gravel banks along the main lakes, especially if you have any points adjacent to them, and they just sort of filter out all over those gravel banks. Um, top water early in the morning during low light conditions. If the water, uh, as the sun gets up a little bit, those fish will move out a little bit deeper. A lot of times I'll, throw, I'll drag a football head, cover a lot of water, but those flat gravelly banks are really good places to fish in June. Now, if I had one bait to throw in June, my favorite lure, it would definitely be a walking topwater like the Mega Bass Diamante. A walking topwater in the month of June is a great way to catch them. You can catch fish on them shallow on points. You can catch fish on them deep on points. They're good for schooling fish. You can fish them around the edge of flooded cover. But June is a really good topwater month for walking topwater. So anyway, hope it helps you guys catch a few, and I'll see you next time. All right, everybody, so let's get into some structure fishing secrets, especially here on the TVA. So a little backstory on, on you know, my kind of adventure to, to find my way here to the Tennessee River. I live on, on the shores of Lake Chickamauga, and I had some really bad tournaments out here on the TVA. I just didn't understand how bass related to current on these lakes that, that are completely current driven. And, uh, and so I ended up having those bad tournaments, ended up um, moving over here and spending a lot of time on these lakes to finally learn what to look for. And I was blown away at how easy it was uh, once I figured out what those those fish were relating to on these lakes, because whenever I think of a, a, uh, a, a current break or an eddy, I think of the back side of structure. So for years upon years, I was looking for the fish on the back side of structure. So if you have the current coming towards you here and you've got, uh, say, a hump, okay, or, or um, you know, a, a, a peninsula that comes out, it drops on both sides, um, I would avoid the upcurrent side of that structure and I would fish, I would look for the fish on the down current side where that, where I would think that the biggest eddy would be because I thought that those fish wouldn't want to be directly into the current. So the biggest secret that I've learned living on the TVA, and once I I realized this and started to realize where these fish were located, it completely unlocked a whole new level of offshore structure fishing for me. And that secret is that the fish are on the upside of the current uh, facing structure. So, um, you know, if you've got a, a um, another example would be, uh, you know, a hump, okay, that's, that's kind of like out in the middle of the current on a lake. Um, Instead of looking on the backside of that hump, 
look on the for the the uh, uh, the current facing side of that structure. So the side of the structure that's just getting pounded by the current. That's where the fish are. That's where the fish are going to hang. And of course, there's all kinds of subtle uh, current breaks and, and eddies going on down there um, that, that we can't obviously see, um, but that's where the fish want to be. And the reason why these fish want to be on that up current side is because, and it makes perfect sense, the bait fish come down the river getting dragged by the current and as they they come up that structure, it's essentially funneling and condensing those those bait fish into an area where the bass can more effectively and efficiently attack and feed. Okay, so that's why those fish like to be on that that forward side of the structure. And I remember the day that I figured this out. It was like, oh my gosh, how come nobody has ever told me to look on the the current facing side of ledges and and points and all this different type of structure but once i realized that and started looking around i started finding fish big schools of fish everywhere so make sure that that when you're on a lake that is a offshore lake that offers a lot of current so the fish are really relating to current um you know type situations look on the up current side of that structure and it, it really helps to to use a uh, mapping source like navionics um, to to look at all the the different types of of structure you have on a lake before you get there and start marking you know the the type of structure that just absolutely faces right into that current and offers those fish a place to position so they can feed and attack those bait fish very, very efficiently. So that is a tip you can take to the bank and it's gonna help you catch a lot more fish on structure offshore. Hey guys, I wanna share with you my favorite area and then the structure to target during the month of June. I'm gonna talk about two for Highland and Lowland Reservoirs here in the central to southern part of the country. And then I'm also gonna share how I'll go attack natural lakes and what baits I would use for that as well with the request we had in one of our recent videos. But first, for Highland and Lowland Reservoirs, my first area and then the structure on the area I'm going to target is going to be more of that sneaky little area. But I'm going to be looking for your rounded points, and I'm going to be targeting brush piles on these rounded points. These brush piles on these rounded points can do a couple things for the bass, and as I'm going to get into. First, you can have bait fish that can be coming by the creek channel, and the bass can use the brush pile as, as an area just to hide so they can go ambush the bait fish. But also, guys, you have brim in your pan fish your panfish and brim are going on there they're spawning through the next couple months and they also you know these brush piles are just areas to where a lot of fish live at and so I'm gonna be looking for these little rounded points that are just sneaky no name just your random little spots guys and sometimes other ones that are overlooked how I'm gonna target these brush piles is with the big worm I have a couple worms I'm gonna share with you guys the bee uh, big bite baits b2 worm is one of the ones I like this is the plum apple color for them and then another one I like is this the old reliable guys and this is probably my, my favorite and the one i've caught my most fish into my biggest fish on is the zoom o monster in the plum apple but one thing you see see they're both plum apple but see there are times see that you can just tell in this video the zoom one's a little darker than this big bites one and that's why i was even just making sure it says plum apple but that's one thing i've noticed that sometimes not all the colors are the same guys there are times where they want this color and then there are times they wanted it a little darker, okay? But why I like to switch up with different worms is because there are just times where how these fall all different in the water and the fish might want one over the other on given days. Now, a new worm I'm gonna try this summer, guys, that's just kind of hit the market is the Six Sense Busa worm. This worm here is pretty unique about it. It kind of has a little groove around the whole, uh, the whole body right here and you still got your long tail with your traditional big worms. This color right here is the blue fleck magic but this is going to be a new worm i'm going to give this summer as well guys i like to throw my worms on a seven two to seven six rod i have two denali covert lights uh worm and jig rod seven two to seven six now one thing guys when fishing these brush piles with worms just a little tip hey just do not get afraid to get in the heart of the brush pile there are times when fish are all the way in there if they're really really active they're going to eat this thing before it even gets in the brush pile but you got to trust it get it in there even when you start coming over the limbs make sure you unclick your reel pull your line out let it kind of go through there but then keep your finger 
up there on the line uh, uh, on the outside of your bait caster so you can feel a bite if they do hit it. Just a little tip for y'all. Okay, the next area that I like to target this summer, guys, I'm going to share two with you. The next one is going to be your main lake ledges. And these can be off humps. They can be off the side of points. But we are looking for ledges. I've already had one good bite this year. I'm filming this, I know, a couple weeks before June. But I've already had one really good bite this year in May on fishing ledges. And guys, it's just something I've, I've always enjoyed fishing. And with this, you know, I'm going to have, uh, I'm, I'm starting to get into my deeper plugs. Last month, I talked about the 5XD. And now I know in this video, we're already kind of getting in them deeper crankbaits. I got two that I like. Here's one that's the Spro Little John DD70. They advertise this to go in that 16 to 20 foot depth range. And if you throw a lot enough line, like I like to throw it on 12 pound fluorocarbon, you can get this a little deeper, okay? This is a tighter style crankbait, a more flatter side. And this bill right here is good deflecting off rocks and your single tr uh, single logs and trees. Now, another crankbait that I, I like, and I've already had a really good day with this. If you've not seen my video, go check it out. This is the 6 inch C20. It advertises, I think, to go in that 18 to 22 foot depth range. It's a different style, as you see, than the Little John DD. It's a little wider, wider bill, gives a different action. So it's always good to have two different types of deep diving plugs on your deck to see which one they want in the given day. Now, one tip on fishing these main river ledges, guys, and these main lake ledges is to make sure that there is bait fish in the area. Today, with all the technology we have and everything with it, it's just very, it makes it makes you save time on just going over these places and seeing bait fish, okay? I know before, me and Johnny, there's a couple of lakes in central Arkansas. We just go throw these dudes the whole day, and then all of a sudden, we pull up on the spot and it just fire. Now, that was us with just 2D sonar, but, and, 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 but now with the technology and everything we have, make sure bait fish is in the area. Okay, I know guys one thing for me if I don't get bit in that first 10 to 15 minutes Probably even 5 to 10. I'm moving now if it's a spot I know they're just loaded up at and there's a lot of boats on the water Yeah, I might stop not make a couple casts eat a peanut butter sandwich But I'm, I'm I'll guard the spot I guess you could say but if I have the lake to myself or you know if, if it's a big body of water I am moving and moving running and gunning until we find a group of fish that's gonna eat for these bigger plugs I like my Denali attacks rod. It's a 710 heavy rod moderate action great for throwing a crankbait I mentioned earlier guys i like to go a little lighter line with these but if i do get around more cover i will go up to that heavier fluorocarbon okay for natural lakes okay so i have a couple natural lakes down here actually 30 minutes from my house i have two i believe or three maybe um but and there's some in northeast arkansas i know that i've fished and I've, we've had a couple requests for the natural lakes and so i'm going to give you just how i would attack a natural lake two baits but i'm going to go with kind of two type of areas with it depending on the type of cover area you have in the lake okay uh so first thing i'm going to have a big worm okay where i'm always going to have a big worm this right here is a great imitator for brim this is that big bites b2 worm i shared earlier the big worm's great for imitating brim and one thing i will do with it, let's say your lake has cypress trees i'm going to flip this around the cypress trees okay there's something about flipping a big worm around cypress trees and just guys so you know i'm just going to share with you on, on a natural body water up in the northwest kind of arkansas region that north to central i don't know what, what what area to call it actually of arkansas but my biggest bass in arkansas has been off flipping a cypress tree with a big worm, okay? And like I said, now it was actually in, it wasn't June, but it was actually August, 100 degrees, hot outside. Hey, big fish will eat big worms. And then another piece of structure on an area, let's say you find your flatter areas. Let's say you're fishing an oxbow and there's a flatter side. There's always gonna be a flatter side and a deeper side. On that flatter side, if I see brush, lay downs, flipping a big worm. Let's say you have a natural lake, oxbow with lily pads and grass, or even cypress trees, okay? My other lure I'm gonna throw is gonna be a frog. Right here is the toad thumper, pop, is there popping frog. This is called the swamp or gill color, I believe. So it's black on top, has a little bit of that clear, but looks like a little bit of a brim, okay? So I'm gonna, th I'm gonna pick this color because I know a lot of natural lakes has panfish, has your brim, and a frog, guys, is something that's great to throw during the summer. You might not have your days with a lot of fish catches, but you're going to have big fish catches. And so when I'm fishing an oxbow, I'm fishing your natural lakes, grass, and or even if there's not grass, I'm going to have a frog on. Keep it simple when you're fishing these natural bodies of water. Don't make it hard. Just go out, get a lot of cast in, throw your big worm, throw your frog, go catch some fish.